What is going on, Trash Talkers? We're back with another episode for you. In today's video, we're going to break down each of the key games from week six in the NFL. All that and much more coming your way right now. Hey Trash Talkers, over 85% of you are still not subscribed to the channel. Please be sure to hit that red subscribe button and turn on notifications as it will help us create more daily content for you. Thank you and enjoy today's video. All right, Nick, week six is almost officially in the books. We still have Monday Night Football tonight, but some really interesting games that we saw this weekend. A lot of ups, a lot of downs, and a lot of late games. So I want to start off with... One of the bigger and most notable games that we had coming into the weekend, I thought this might have been the game of the year, and it proved me wrong, but the Chargers facing off against the Baltimore Ravens, the, the Ravens absolutely blew the doors off the Chargers after we saw Los Angeles put up 49 points against the Cleveland Browns just a week ago. They were able to scrounge up six total points against the Baltimore Ravens. Now, obviously, the Ravens defense, the Browns defense, you know, one's a little more proven than the other. The other one's based on hype so far. But with everything that we saw, what did you see that most concerned you for the Chargers moving forward? Yeah, well, I think this is exactly what you're going to get if you have a game like they did against the Browns where you put up a ton of points. There's a, a cost that comes with putting up a ton of points, and that's showing everybody everything you have on offense because it takes everything in your playbook to get that amount of points. Now the Baltimore Ravens saw everything they needed to see. They could plan for everything they could possibly take and it was exactly right. They were prepared for it. Everything that the Chargers, that Justin Herbert were going to throw at them, they were ready and prepared for. And that's why you saw such a stagnant offense for the Chargers. I mean, the, the Chargers just couldn't do anything offensively. Herbert, 22 of 39 for 195 yards. Didn't even break 200 yards with a touchdown and an interception. Herbert actually led the team in rushing yards. Two carries, 12 yards. Austin Eckler, six carries, seven yards. Josh Kelly, four carries, seven yards as well. Abysmal on the ground. And then on top of that, Keenan Allen was their top receiver with five catches for 50 yards. Mike Williams, who's been having this outstanding and stellar year, just gone missing. Yeah, it, it's a it's a bad time for the Chargers offense. They, they've got their work cut out for them because they're going to be faced with other tough environments faced up against other elite talent and they've got to be prepared for it they can't just fold under the the moment and you know try to fight for next week because soon enough they're going to be in the playoffs and it's ride or die it's win or go home and you can't fold under that pressure you got to live up to that moment they got to show that they can persevere otherwise they're going to be a really quick team that leaves early in the playoffs i just think that the chargers have so much potential that should not be wasted they have have what it takes to really not only compete in the division but i think they could they could win the entire conference i think that they have the talent necessary they have the coaching staff finally to get them where they need to be that i just don't want to see this go by the wayside yeah and before we jump off this game listen the baltimore ravens they gave us a scare early on in the season but they're sitting at five and one in a division where the browns are struggling baker's hurt you have the Cincinnati Bengals who have really come out by the surprise, but who knows if that's going to keep on. And then the Pittsburgh Steelers, Big Ben's about one sack away from turning to dust. So Lamar Jackson looking really good right now. Obviously, he doesn't have to do it through the air because of his mobility, but 167 yards on 19 completions, a touchdown and two interceptions. He's got to be able to upgrade this passing game if they have a shot at the playoffs and, and going deep, right? Yeah, Lamar is a little hot and cold for me when it comes to his passing game. He's got to have more consistency. He's getting his weapons back. He didn't have Sammy Watkins, but Rashad Bateman is a big bodied receiver that he now gets to work with. And I think that he has no excuses when it comes to passing the ball. 167 yards is not going to get the job done against most defenses. And he's got some bigger, tougher competition that he has to go up against later this season. 
I think that the Baltimore defense won't be able to keep up this pace the entire season. They've had their issues as well that will be exposed. So you've got to rely on Lamar Jackson in those instances to pick up the pace with his passing attack. The run game won't always be there. I, I just think Lamar has a little bit more work to do, but he's on the right pace. Let's move to our second down where we take a look at the Cowboys versus the Patriots. One of the most thrilling matchups that we had all weekend long. The Cowboys, the Patriots, listen, the Cowboys came in and they just expected to roll over the Patriots who have been struggling all year. They have not found consistency on offense or on defense. And there's just been a lot of commotion up in New England. Well, the Dallas Cowboys were met with one of their toughest matches of the season outside of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Cowboys were taken to the absolute brink by Mac Jones and company. So, uh, Nick, why don't we start with the Cowboys? Dak Prescott, 36 of 51, 445 yards, three touchdowns with that interception. Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard combined for 110 yards rushing, which is low for them. Uh, but CeeDee Lamb having an incredible game, nine receptions, 149 yards, and those two big touchdowns, including the walk-off game winner. Nick, what'd you like from the Cowboys that you saw against the Patriots? Yeah, everything in the past game was fantastic. It seemed like Dak Prescott really could take his time. He had a lot of time in the pocket to work. And then it, it seemed like most of the receivers were open on every single drive. It, it, you saw that it didn't matter if it was CeeDee Lamb, Amari Cooper, Wilson, or Brown. These guys were getting open against the secondary of the Patriots, which is supposed to be one of the better secondaries in the league. They have been the weakness for the New England Patriots the last few weeks. And in this game, that was very prevalent. Uh, Dak Prescott was really able to do anything over 440 yards is unbelievable, especially against the Bill Belichick defense. That's not something that you're used to. And I, I just think that if they can keep up this passing attack, the run game is always going to be as strong as it is. It's going to be one of the toughest offenses to stop in the NFL. Let's switch to the other side of the ball because the Cowboys came in with a very dominant defense and obviously Number seven at cornerback, he's a guy who can eat at you up. But I have to give props to Mac Jones and Josh McDaniels with, with the offense that they were able to come up with. Mac Jones, 15 of 21, so not nearly half of what Dak Prescott was throwing out. 229 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Obviously, that interception going to number seven, bringing it to the house. Uh, what do you like from Mac Jones? What do you like from the passing game? And uh, do you think this is a another step in the right direction for Mac? This is absolutely a great step in the right direction. Mac Jones has shows showing his confidence, his poise, his ability to lead the team under a lot of duress. It was a big moment for a lot of the game for the New England Patriots. And Mac Jones was leading the helm. And, and he has great presence in that huddle. He knows how to take control of the team. He knows how to dissect defenses. And this is as a rookie. This is something you see as you know a true veteran. We don't even see this from guys like Josh Allen or Kyler Murray. But Mac Jones doing it in his first year, his sixth game of his career, that's unbelievable. Mac Jones is going to be something special in this league. And I think he's still ahead of Jamar Chase for that Offensive Rookie of the Year award. Just had to get that little shot in there. But uh, before we move on from this game again, I want to talk a little bit about the running game because Damian Harris was obviously banged up coming into this one, but he got 18 carries for 101 yards and a touchdown. 5.6 yards average per carry. Ramondre Stevenson spelled him a little bit, just a little bit. Five carries, 23 yards, 4.6 yards per carry. Now, obviously, the Patriots have, have really focused on the run and, and being able to get drives and everything, but the, the time of possession between these two teams was just absolutely absurd. Do you think that there is something that the Patriots could do more with, with the running backs running the way they are, Mac Jones being as efficient as he is? Is there something the Patriots can do more on third downs or, or anything to stay on the field longer? Yeah, I think they just need to be a little bit more creative. Josh McDaniels can't keep holding tight onto that that playbook he's got to open it up a little bit they're not playing for the playoffs right now you're playing for your life you've got to just put it all out there no matter what it's going to cost you whether you know you're going to have the following game is going to be a little bit harder because you expose your, your playbook 
it doesn't matter. You, you, you can't be holding on for a chance at the playoffs and then you can let it loose. That's This isn't Tom Brady anymore. This isn't that offense. It's a different era. You've got to let Mac Jones go through his mistakes. He's going to continue to make mistakes if with the plays he doesn't run. So you've got to put it out there. Let him work through the kinks because you're playing for future seasons. Let him get used to every single play in the playbook. Let every, all the players he's working with get used to that. If everybody is used to those plays and can run those plays, you not only know which what works best, but now everybody's on the same page, and that's what makes everything work. Absolutely. All right, let's move to our third down where we take a look at one of the more interesting games of the weekend where the Las Vegas Raiders, fresh off the firing of John Gruden, all the things that they went through, Derek Carr even coming into the game saying he had a very difficult time trying to focus on the playbook and, and just the game at hand with everything that was going on around the organization and around that building. Doesn't matter. The Las Vegas Raiders came out firing on all cylinders. Derek Carr specifically, 18 of 27, 341 yards, two touchdowns. Josh Jacobs, 16 carries, 53 yards and a touchdown. Kenyon Drake also getting a rushing touchdown. And Henry Ruggs, three receptions, 97 yards and a touchdown as well. Big game for the Raiders as they beat the Broncos 34-24. to Nick, what did you see from the Raiders that is going to give you hope for this team moving forward without John Gruden? Yeah, well, I think we see this time and time again. When a coach gets fired, the team rallies around each other and they play for each other because that's who they can count on. And in this game, it was no different. The guys rallied around each other. They, they played their hearts out for each other and they got out a big victory over a tough divisional opponent who's playing really well this season. The Las Vegas Raiders are going to continue to do this week over week. This isn't the same team anymore that's going to play to their competition. This is a team that is going to find its own identity. They're going to find that by working with each other and that's just going to make them stronger in the, in the long run. I like the Las, Las Vegas Raiders. I think that they actually have a stronger shot at making the playoffs now than they did a week ago so i, I just want to kind of go back to something you just said you know a, just a week ago we were talking about how the raiders played down to their competition do you think that was a john gruden thing or a an organizational thing with the raiders no everything stems from the head coach and how they control the team and and how they run the show now with him gone, they all get to have say in everything. It's more of a democracy. And when you have that, you get better ideas. It's more inclusion. It's more collaborative work. And that's what gets you the best product. Now that there, it's, it's more of a level playing field when it comes to the coaching staff and how things are run. And that's going to lead to, to a much better team. I think that makes the Raiders a much more dangerous team. Absolutely. Uh, I, I like where the Raiders are headed right now. Hopefully the Raiders can be led in the right direction post John Gruden. And uh, right now the, on the other side, though, we have the Denver Broncos and Teddy Bridgewater, 334 yards on 35 completions, three touchdowns, but also three interceptions, giving us his best Jameis Winston impersonation here. Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon almost non-existent as these guys had to be taken away from the entire playbook because they had to focus on passing. They got down to such an incredible lead. It was 31 to 10 by the end of the third quarter. Just having to claw your way back is going to throw that running game out. Noah Fant, Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick had pretty decent lines overall, but at the end of the day, Nick, the Broncos have to fix a lot of things on this offense. Yeah, I think a lot of their issues really just stem from injuries, and it's unfortunate. Losing Jerry Judy and then losing KJ Hamler, those are two big pieces of your offense. That's a lot of your deep threat, and that's going to hinder your offense in the long run. You're, you know, these defenses are going to learn to to handle two wide receivers and a tight end. That's typical for any team. So when you have Teddy Bridgewater throwing the rock, he's not the biggest threat either. He's just an average quarterback. You're going to need an above average quarterback to sustain this team in the long run. I just don't like where the Denver Broncos are headed right now until this team gets fully healthy. All right, for our fourth down, I want to take a look at the Arizona Cardinals at the Cleveland Browns, one of the more anticipated games we had coming into week six. And the Cardinals did not disappoint, but the Cleveland Browns sure did. The Cleveland Browns now falling to 3-3. Three and three. The Cardinals still remaining undefeated at 6-0. and oh. Kyler Murray, 229 yards on four touchdowns, 20 of 30. Very efficient day for him. 
James Conner really leading the rushing attack on 16 carries for 71 yards. Chase Edmonds, four carries, 46 yards, really spelling each other off really well. But A.J. Green, Christian Kirk, DeAndre Hopkins seem to be the go-to guys, all with touchdowns, all with incredible lines. Nick, what would you see from this Arizona Cardinals offense that is going to continue to showcase and, and really beat out the best defenses we see in the NFL. Yeah, well, it seems as long as they're not playing a divisional opponent, this offense is going to thrive. It doesn't seem like there's a, a defense outside of their division that can stop them. They're putting up an incredible amount of points, and Kyler Murray is still on that MVP race. He's still proving that he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL by just going to every single receiver in his vault. It's incredible how deep they are at the wide receiver position. Now acquiring Zach Hurts, that makes him even stronger. Chase Edmonds looking great, looking better as he gets healthier. Uh, the sky's the limit, really, for this offense. And this was all done without clicks to Kingsbury on the field. Yeah, I mean, the, the Cardinals definitely didn't miss Cliff Kingsbury. That is for sure. But it doesn't matter because he has these guys ready to go. But on the other side, we have Kevin Stefanski and Kevin Stefanski coming off of coach of the year award that he received last year. He, he's struggling a little bit right now. Sitting at 500, the Cleveland Browns came in with all these massive expectations. And granted, they are expectations placed on them by other people outside of the organization. It doesn't matter. Baker Mayfield has failed to show us yet another improvement like we've seen with players like Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, so on and so forth. Baker Mayfield has not taken that next step. And now, on top of the torn labrum that he's dealing with, he also separated his non-throwing shoulder. This guy is going battered and beaten around. He's just trying to make magic happen with this offense, and it's just not clicking with him without Jarvis Landry. Is there something more that the Browns can do to help Baker Mayfield? Is Baker Mayfield the problem? Like, what can Cleveland do here? Yeah, it's got to be much bigger running attack from the Cleveland Browns. They've got to get back to that old gritty style of football that Kevin Stefanski was running in Minnesota. That's what we expected. And ever since he's come over from the Minnesota Vikings, they've been passing the ball a lot more than expected. Baker Mayfield is just not that guy. He's, he's not thriving in that role and he doesn't look good with OBJ. Only Jarvis Landry and without him there, I just don't see this offense being able to do anything, especially with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt hurt. It's a bad situation. Baker Mayfield de dealing with his injuries, that makes it 10 times worse because I just think he's a mediocre quarterback when, when fully healthy. So they're going to continue to struggle on offense. It's really going to be the defense that's going to have to try to carry them until they get a little bit more, more offensive help. I mean, the Cleveland Browns are obviously without Nick Chubb in this one as he was dealing with his injury. Kareem Hunt on a pitch count going into the game, not boating well for the Browns with the Cardinals knowing all of that information. Kareem Hunt, 14 carries, 66 yards. Donovan Peoples-Jones is the only person to have a touchdown on the day, and one of them came on, an, on a Hail Mary to end the half, which was absolutely incredible catch by him. But without that, you're looking at seven points by the Cleveland Browns, and you just have to wonder, is Kevin Stefanski doing enough on offense to get this team right? Is Baker Mayfield truly the answer? There's a lot of questions here. Maybe they have to move on from Odell Beckham Jr. Five catches for 79 yards is not a terrible line. But when you have a guy like OBJ, he needs to have a much bigger line than that. And Donovan Peoples-Jones getting bigger stats than him, better stats than him, is not something you want to be putting out there, especially against the Arizona Cardinals. So I think that the Cleveland Browns have to look inward right now as they have a very tough road ahead of them, especially in their own division with Cincinnati and Baltimore creeping up behind them. All right, well, I want to hear from you guys. Let us know what you think about the games that we talked about. Let us know what you think about all the games from week six. All right, well, that's going to be all for now. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. We go live every single day. That'll be all. Peace and love.